Our story today begins in Las Vegas, a city where vibrant life is in full swing day and night. Over half a million people call this place home, but today we focus on Shauna N. Calm. She was born and raised as a Mormon in Salt Lake City, Utah, in 1964. At the age of 18, Shauna decided to move to Las Vegas, 500 miles away, to pursue her dreams. She worked as a cosmetic salesperson in a local store, but she always wanted more. Shauna was drawn to the entertainment industry, the glamour of nightlife, and the excitement that Las Vegas had to offer. Soon after moving, Shauna landed a job as a waitress at a local restaurant, and then moved on to the Palms Casino, one of the most popular and prestigious venues in the area. She quickly settled in, making close friends with her colleagues, who became like family to her. Shauna was adored by her clients, who loved her friendly and open demeanor. She was known for her positivity and carefree attitude, always smiling and finding the bright side in any situation. Shauna valued her freedom and embraced life to the fullest. In 2002, Shauna met George Tiffy at the Palms. George, a charming and charismatic man, was a local sports star and the king of his high school prom. His family adored him for his warm nature and helpful attitude. After graduating from the American Military Academy, George joined the fire service. From the moment he met Shauna, he was captivated. She was always busy, running around making people happy, and George admired her work ethic. Their connection was instant, and their relationship grew stronger each day. Within a year, Shauna and George welcomed a daughter, Madison. George was a loving father, and Shauna was over the moon about their little girl. After two years, the couple married in a beautiful ceremony on the sunny shores of Hawaii. Everything seemed perfect until George started facing financial difficulties. He lost a significant amount of money in the real estate market crash, and Shauna's earnings became their sole source of income. The stress of their situation began to change George, and Shauna noticed his behavior becoming erratic. He grew overly jealous and touchy, and his actions became more controlling. One day, when Shauna was getting ready for work, George compared her to a call girl. As George's behavior worsened, Shauna began to feel uncomfortable around him. He had befriended a homeless man whom he hired to do odd jobs around their home. Shauna grew uneasy around this man and the tension between her and George escalated. Unable to cope with his mood swings any longer, Shauna moved into her own apartment in Summer Lynn. The couple sought marriage counseling and George continued to spend time with Madison. Shauna was devastated by their separation, but she remained hopeful that things would improve. However, it seemed increasingly likely that a divorce was on the horizon. One night, after a late shift, Shauna returned home to find her house had been ransacked. Several valuable items, including her wedding ring, had been stolen. Strangely, the thief had also taken a pair of bikini trunks and left a stack of boxer shorts behind. Shauna was terrified but tried her best to move on from the unsettling incident. On September 29, 2012, Shauna worked another late shift. After finishing, she made her way home, arriving around 3.30 a.m. She parked on the street, entered the house through the garage, and went inside. George, who had also worked late, picked up Madison from her grandmother's house and drove to Shauna's home to collect some of her belongings. When they arrived, they found the house in chaos, and Shauna lying motionless on the floor. George immediately called the police. The police arrived and discovered bloodstains and signs of a violent struggle, indicating that Shauna had been attacked while climbing the stairs. The murder weapon appeared to be a hammer, and it was clear that Shauna had fought for her life in her final moments. A neighbor reported hearing a dull sound around 3.30 a.m., but since Shauna often returned home at night, nothing seemed out of the ordinary. A few hours later, another neighbor found Shauna's phone, medical card, and cosmetics discarded on the side of the road. George's alibi was confirmed by his colleagues at the fire department, but there were many unanswered questions. Investigators wondered if the recent burglary had any connection to Shauna's death. Perhaps the burglar returned to the house, unaware that Shauna was home, 
and when he encountered her, he killed her to cover his tracks. Detectives struggled to determine whether Shauna had been a random victim or if she had been targeted for a specific reason. Shauna's colleagues at the casino were shocked by the news and many wondered if they were next. Shauna's sister Paola had long suspected that George's strange behavior might have something to do with her sister's death. After speaking with a psychologist, Paola became more convinced that George might be involved. Paola and her husband quickly booked a flight to Las Vegas to get to the bottom of things. The day after Shauna's body was found, police received a tip from a man known as Big Will. He said that a homeless friend of his, known only as Greyhound, had confessed to killing Shauna with a hammer. According to Big Will, Greyhound was not at all distressed by the murder. He seemed calm and happy, as if he had just completed a task. Big Will warned the police that once the news of the crime became public, Greyhound would likely be caught. With this new lead, police located Greyhound and arrested him for drug possession. After interrogation, Greyhound admitted to using and selling illegal drugs but denied having anything to do with Shauna's death. The detectives were perplexed. Greyhound seemed an unlikely suspect for such a brutal murder, and there was no clear connection between him and Shauna. Still, the investigation continued, and the police began searching for more clues that might explain why Shauna had been targeted. The location where Shauna's body was found was remote and secluded, far from everything. The officers were initially worried that, due to the vastness of the area, they would spend weeks searching for potential clues. However, Noel had no idea that just a few minutes' walk from his tent, a pair of his trousers, stained with blood, would lead investigators to key evidence. Also found were a price tag from a hammer and bloody underwear. Tests confirmed that the blood on these items belonged to Shauna. Back at the station, detectives checked the phone records of Noel, the homeless man involved in the case, and soon found the crucial contact that tied everything together. George, Shauna's ex-husband. When asked who George was, Noel replied, My friend, the fireman. Noel Stevens, it turned out, was the same person whom George had hired for small household chores in the past. Using the barcode from the hammer's price tag, the police traced where it was sold. Security footage from the store revealed shocking evidence. George and Noel were seen making purchases together including two hammers, one of which was later identified as the weapon used in Shauna's murder. This confirmed George's involvement in the crime. As more evidence surfaced, including phone records and CCTV footage, it became clear that George had orchestrated Shauna's murder. Noel admitted that George had paid him $600 to carry out the crime and that they had planned it together. They even staged a rehearsal break-in weeks before the actual murder. On September 29, 2012, Noel broke into Shauna's house and waited for her. When Shauna arrived home, Noel attacked her. According to his confession, he hit Shauna multiple times with a hammer until she stopped moving. After recounting the details of the crime, Noel led police to where the murder weapon was buried. Nine days after Shauna's body was discovered, Detectives informed George's mother and sister that he was now being investigated in connection with Shauna's death. The family was shocked and refused to believe that George could be involved. Moments later, George's sister called him, warning him about the investigation. In response, George drove recklessly and crashed his truck into a concrete wall, an apparent attempt to take his own life. Fortunately, he survived, and two days later, he was arrested. The investigation found sufficient evidence to charge both George and Noel. Three months later, Noel Stevens pled guilty to the crime in exchange for a lighter sentence, agreeing to testify against George. He was sentenced to 42 years in prison. In August 2015, George's trial began. The prosecution presented strong evidence, including recordings of phone calls between George and Noel, security footage, and Noel's testimony. The defense attempted to discredit the evidence, suggesting that the purchase of the hammer did not prove George's involvement. 
They also argued that Knowles' account of the crime was unreliable due to his mental state, claiming that he was prone to hallucinations. Despite these attempts, the jury found George guilty of conspiracy to commit first-degree murder, as well as several other charges. He was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole, plus an additional 81 years for his involvement in a robbery and burglary conspiracy. The judge emphasized the pure evil of George's actions in his sentencing speech. Shauna's sister expressed relief at the verdict, saying that George was a controlling manipulator and that the worst punishment for him would be to spend the rest of his life in prison, unable to control anything. Three years after Shauna's tragic death, justice had been served. George filed an appeal, claiming that his mental state had been affected by medications he was taking and that he was not fully aware of his actions at the time of the crime. His appeal was unsuccessful and his conviction remained unchanged. He also criticized his lawyer for not requesting a psychiatric evaluation. Shauna's family, meanwhile, found some peace knowing that justice had been done. They moved Shauna's grave from Las Vegas to Utah, where she could rest near the grave of her daughter's father. Shauna's daughter, Madison, now lives with her grandmother in Utah. Although the loss of Shauna remains a painful memory, Madison's family ensures that she grows up surrounded by love and support. Shauna's sister, Paula, recalls how Madison often smiles when she talks about her mother. And though the loss was devastating, they take comfort in knowing Shauna's love for her daughter was unwavering until the end. Thank you for watching.